Rotator cuff disease is incredibly common and is a leading cause of pain and disability. Cortisone injections have long been used to try to reduce pain and symptoms, yet more and more studies are coming out revealing the potential side effects of steroid injections. And that's why many physicians are looking for alternate and better therapies to try to treat shoulder problems. One of those treatments is orthobiologic therapy such as platelet-rich plasma injections. PRP injections have been extremely well studied and shown to have excellent outcomes when used to treat conditions such as knee arthritis as well as tennis elbow. But what about rotator cuff disease? The literature so far has been mixed with conflicting results, but now a newly published study looks to add to the library of data to help answer the question, does platelet-rich plasma injections help the shoulder for rotator cuff disorders? Let's get started. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. My goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Rotator cuff disease is incredibly common with some data reporting that it accounts for up to 70% of the causes of shoulder pain. And rotator cuff disease is actually a spectrum of problems involving the shoulder. It includes rotator cuff tendinopathy, subacromial impingement syndrome, partial tears of the rotator cuff, and full thickness tears of the rotator cuff. Now the most common symptoms related to rotator cuff disease is pain with overhead movements. Range of motion can also be affected, usually because it hurts to move the shoulder. The good news is most of the time rotator cuff disease can be treated with non-operative management. This often includes a combination of anti-inflammatory medications as well as exercise therapy with a home exercise program or physical therapy. But what if you have so much pain that you can't work on exercise therapy because it hurts so much? And that's where injections come in. Now we've long used cortisone injections to try to treat pain and inflammation related to rotator cuff disease. However, more and more trials are coming out showing that the effects of cortisone injections are rather short-lived and they may have rather significant side effects. Specifically related to the shoulder, if the injection is not done with imaging guidance, for example with ultrasound, the cortisone can actually be put close to or into the tendons. This can cause tendon degradation, which will weaken the rotator cuff and and even make any future surgical procedures more difficult. And that's why orthopedists are constantly looking for alternate treatments instead of steroid injections. And that's where the orthobiologics and that's where platelet-rich plasma come in. Now I have a deep dive video into what PRP is, which I will link here so you can check that out if you're interested. PRP has been studied extensively for tendon disorders and they're quickly becoming first line therapy for tendon problems such as tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, and hip tendinopathies. But clinical trials involving the use of PRP for rotator cuff disorders have been mixed. Some studies suggest benefits while others show no difference with placebo. But as our injection protocols and our ability to create higher quality PRP improves, the hope is that clinical trials will start to show more benefits. After all, it doesn't make sense that PRP works really well for one tendon problem and doesn't work for another tendon problem like the shoulder. In addition, most clinical trials in orthopedics and sports medicine have a small to average sample size. So whatever data we get may be limited because the sample size is small. And that's where systematic review and meta-analyses come in. That's what this newest study published in the Journal of Arthroscopy did. This study is a meta-analysis of 13 randomized controlled trials, all looking at how PRP injections affect people who suffer from rotator cuff disease. These 13 trials had a total of 725 patients included in the final assessment. In terms of functional score outcomes after the PRP injection, the researchers found that at medium and long-term follow-up, PRP led to statistically better functional scores when compared to cortisone injections. When it came to VAS pain scores, the researchers found that there was no statistical difference in pain relief between PRP and cortisone injections. Now, what about range of motion? Here, the data is mixed. Only three studies reported medium-term and long-term data. Of these three, two of them found that PRP had superior outcomes with range of motion, whereas the third found no difference. And what about tendon integrity and tendon health? Five studies reported ultrasound findings for the rotator cuff after a PRP or cortisone injection. They found that PRP produced a significant reduction in frequency of partial tears and effusion. Another found that there was a significant improvement in the grade of tendon lesions in the PRP group with no improvement seen in the steroid group. A third study found no difference in tendon thickness at any follow-up time period. In their conclusions, the authors write, PRP injection is not worse than steroid injection in 
in terms of pain relief and functional recovery at any time point of follow-up. They say that PRP injection may reduce rates of subsequent injection or surgery and might provide better improvement in pain and function in the medium and long term. PRP injection can be a viable alternative to cortisone injection for conservative non-surgical treatment of rotator cuff disease. Okay, so here are my thoughts on the study. First, it seems like PRP is definitely not inferior to steroid injections and may actually have better outcomes in the medium as well as the long term. This would be consistent with the use of PRP for other conditions. But unlike other conditions like tennis elbow or gluteal tendinopathy, where the long term data shows profound improvements over cortisone, this meta analysis only showed slight improvement of PRP over cortisone in the long term. And why is that? Well, the first problem is that many of these studies did not report their platelet concentration or their PRP kit types. In another video, I explained why this is critically important and may even be a fatal flaw if a study uses inferior quality PRP. And it all comes down to concentration. After all, if I prescribe someone a 10 milligram dose of a blood pressure medication, I can't expect the same outcomes as if I prescribe a 100 milligram dose of that same medication. So PRP type really matters, platelet concentration really matters, cell types really matter. The other arguably more important reason why I think PRP studies keep showing mixed results is because at the very beginning of the video, I told you that rotator cuff disease is a spectrum of problems, including rotator cuff tendinopathy, subacromial impingement syndrome, partial tears, and complete tears. And people with shoulder pain are not so easily classified into only one of these problems. Most of the time, patients will have a combination of these issues. So if they have a combination of these issues, where do you put the PRP? Do you just put it in the tendon? How about the subacromial subdeltoid bursa? Or maybe even in the glenohumeral joint, or perhaps even the acromioclavicular joint. What I'm trying to get as is, if a person has a combination of these problems and you only put the PRP in one of these areas, you're potentially not treating the other problems, which can lead to persistent symptoms. And we can contrast that to tennis elbow. This is an overused condition of only one tendon at the outside of the elbow. We put the PRP into that one tendon and people get so much better. But again, the shoulder is much more complicated than that. Maybe if we put PRP in only one spot and don't treat the other spots, that could explain why we are not seeing the dramatic improvements that we see in other tendon disorders like tennis elbow. The other important thing to point out is that there are no side effects of PRP. If steroid injections are not administered ultrasound guided, we are potentially risking damage to the rotator cuff tendons and causing long-term problems. With PRP, we don't have to worry about that. And if some studies are to believed, PRP will actually help improve the long-term health of the tendons. So I do agree with the authors that PRP is definitely an alternative to cortisone injections, but at least in my practice, it's still not first line because we don't have definitive slam dunk data that PRP is clearly superior. Hopefully with more well-conducted clinical trials, we'll be able to make stronger conclusions in the future. And if you're interested in learning more about PRP, check out my deep dive video on orthobiologics or my video where I answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get about PRP. Thanks for watching.